I'm Mamai. I'm Nikki. And, and this, this is The, the Dish, Dish, where you can find all things flavorful. On this episode of The Dish, we'll be giving you a scoop of two dope artists. And you'll be getting a taste of these flavorful entrepreneurs. And we'll be talking about a great woman in the struggle. Dope. Driven on passion every day. That's exactly what Lotus Prime represents. The man behind the brand is Kenny. Kenny has been handcrafting jewelry for over 11 years. His inspiration came from his mother, who sparked the idea of him creating jewelry. Now Lotus Prime refers to all of his pieces as artifacts, an object created by human, typically an item of cultural interest, and so it can last a long time. Lotus Prime puts the art in artifact. Many ask, where did the name Lotus Prime come from? Well, Kenny refers to himself as the Lotus Flower. The Lotus Flower only grows in tough conditions. The tough conditions for Kenny would be his hometown, Youngstown, Ohio. Now, Prime, Prime is the best possible quality and the best you can be. Put it together, you have Lotus Prime. Now, Lotus Prime spends around 10 hours a day crystal wrapping, beading, jewelry styling. Now that's about 70 hours a week. And that is definitely a dope artist. So Lotus Prime is definitely driven on passion every day. You can purchase his artifacts at his website or you can purchase them in person at the Evolve store on the website. We'll post the link and the address in the comments where you can purchase some of these amazing artifacts. That is pretty dope. That is dope. So <laughs> how? Yeah. And he has do the it 70 hours a week. 70. You gotta love what you do. Our other dope artist this week is Kayla Jones. She is a 21 year old model who was born and raised in Youngstown, Ohio. Now Kayla's only been modeling for three years, but in those three years, she has put in some work, serious work. She has done several fashion shows in the area and she has worked with numerous photographers in Youngstown. But Kayla has also been modeling in New York's Fashion Week. She modeled for three different designers. She was also featured in Vogue Italiana. Kayla originally got into modeling because she's always been an artist. She's been into acting and um, sketching and drawing. So, um, you know, it was an easy transition for her. She felt like modeling was um, a way that she could express herself fully. Um, she said that she likes to use her body as her, you know, art. She loves every photo shoot that she's done, but her favorite one to date is one that she did with photographer Julius Poole. This photo shoot stands out to her because it allowed her to be more daring than ever before. Wearing only a coat, panties, and jewelry made by Lotus Prime. Kayla, she was able to step out of her comfort zone. Every every day, at one point, every single day, she was walking. Yes. In her driveway, in heels, in snow, rain. Like, it didn't matter. She was outside working. Dope. She got it. Definitely dope. <laughs> What's your flavor? What's your flavor? What's your flavor? What's your flavor? On this segment of What's Your Flavor, we have two tasty entrepreneurs. Our first entrepreneur is Fresh to Death. Fresh to Death is a local vegan vegetarian one-stop shop where you can find the world's most refreshing sea moss water. Get fresh salad, fresh fruit, fresh fruit platters, ginger chews, fresh press juice, the list goes on. And you can actually order right through DoorDash. Now, many may ask, who's the owner behind Fresh to Death? And why is it called Fresh to Death? The owner behind Fresh to Death it's Tiffany. And the reason why she calls it fresh to death is because Tiffany is actually 50% deaf in both of her ears. So she plans on bringing awareness to those with disabilities who are still high functioning. Just head on down to West Federal Street and you'll find Tiffany right in the food court of the Youngstown Federal Building. Right in Youngstown, Ohio. Mm. Now that's flavorful. Our next flavorful entrepreneur is Grounded by Earth. 
which is a local business that makes custom waist beads. Mm. Now, Grounded by Earth was founded and created by poet D. Jackson, also known as Earth. Waist beads have been around for forever, since 15th century in, Niger in Nigeria. They were worn as symbols of womanhood, fertility, protection, and spirituality. Today, waist beads are pretty much worn for the same reasons. Earth believes that your waist beads can be worn for whatever they represent for you. As long as you set out what your intentions are for your waist beads, she will make them for you. Earth uses different types of colored beads and crystals to design her waist beads. She makes waist beads in all sizes, from petite to plus size, for men or women. Also has some really exciting sales on her waist beads quite often. Um, if you would like to purchase or look at any her waist, of her waist beads, you can visit her Instagram page at groundxearth. How about we tell you about some black women in the struggle? Bessie Coleman was the first woman of African-American descent to become a pilot. She was an example of determination and strength to women and girls of any race. Bessie was born in Texas on January 26, 1892. She was a good student. She excelled in math and loved to read. At age 23, she moved to Chicago where she lived with her brothers and worked as a manicurist. She heard stories of pilots returning from World War I and the desire to fly was sparked. Bessie looked into going to flying school, but no school would accept her because she was black. She searched out black flying instructors, but they wouldn't train her because she was a woman. The publisher of the Chicago Defender newspaper heard of Bessie's plight, and he encouraged her to study flight abroad. Bessie took French lessons and was funded by the newspaper to move to France to learn to fly. On June 15, 1921, Bessie Coleman was the first person of African-American descent to earn an international pilot's license. Bessie then took additional courses to improve her flying skills and then flew home to the United States. She was met with much media fanfare when she reached New York. Bessie wanted to become a stunt flyer, but that required advanced lessons. No one in the United States would train her, so she went back to Europe and was trained by Anthony Folker in the Netherlands. Bessie returned to the United States and became a star stunt pilot. She became known as Queen Bess and had admirers of both the black and white communities. Bessie enjoyed the attention, but she dreamed of opening a flight school. Sadly, Bessie died in a terrible plane accident on April 30th, 1926. She was thrown from a plane and fell 2,000 feet to her death. She was only 34 years old. Bessie Coleman left her mark on the flying community for both women and people of African-American descent. She paved the way for others to achieve their dream of flight, no matter their race or gender. That was a bitch. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. <laughs> so we'll see you guys next time right here on The Dish. And once again, I'm my mind. I'm Nikki. And this was The, the Dish. Dish. Wings. That was even weirder than last week! <laughs>